good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now if you remember in the last video you will remember me made in, making these side walls here and um, putting in the windows, window frames, window sills etc. But I've also gone ahead and made the rear four sections. So these rear two here are the same length as the front two, those ones. But there is now two much shorter sections in the middle. And the reason for that is because if you remember, I said the whole shed is going to tip up so I can get access to the track to clean it. If there's any issues, whatever, whatever, whatever. But also, if I, the other thought I was having, if I tried to tip the whole shed in one go, it's going to be enormously difficult to try and get that to work together. The forces that are going to be involved in that are just going to be, um, well, it could actually tear it apart, to be honest. So I'm splitting it into three sections, which are going to be a lot more manageable. So each section will have its own set of hinges, and I'll, I'll mention those again in a second. But if I tip up the front section, the middle bit will go with it. And if I tip up the back section, the middle bit will go with it. And I will also be able to lift up the middle section all by itself. OK, and that will be just because there'll be some um, roof caps, which will just hide the join between the two sections of the building. So that's the reason why it will tip up. But finding hinges to do that is is going to be quite a challenge. And then I had a, a message from Alan at Dragon Junction. And he suggested using piano hinges, which I hadn't thought of, but that is such a brilliant idea. So thank you so much for that, Alan. And I can stick those just inside the building there. And I've got two hinges coming, um, one of a metre and the other one of, I think it's 240 millimetres, which I can cut down. So one part will go in this bit and the other part, 500 mil long, will go in that bit. And I can disguise it as part of the wall, as if there's like a um, part sticking out in the wall. And I think that will work out really, really well. So thanks once again, Alan, for that brilliant suggestion. If you've not subscribed to Dragon Junction, please do. Um, he's got a fantastic setup over there and then got quite a large layout um, in, in his shed. And uh, over this past year, he's been building an outside part to the layout. So the trains would come out the shed do a loop and then go back in again um, but he's had a few issues with weather conditions and it's been fascinating to watch how he's gone about solving those problems so do pop across Dragon Junction um, and give him a sub and I'm sure he would appreciate that so thanks once again Alan for that brilliant idea and um, so that will be done in the next few days um, but I'm going to start turning my attention to these things. You might notice I've only put um, a, about three or well, five bracings in there. There's a whole pile of them here. And the reason they're not in is purely because this is like a house of cards. I only managed to get five to stand up, um, frankly. And it was just it was a bit of a nightmare just to get that bit standing up. So um, eventually they will all be glued in. But... In the next clip, I show you what I've actually done to these and how I've gone about making those. And then in the following clip, I'm starting to turn my attention to the fascia that runs along the top edge of the building all the way along, both sides, obviously, and the pillars that run down there. So I'll be showing you how I do that. And that would also include the start of this end section here and that top bit just there. All right catch you in a minute then. I thought I'd show you how I go about making these. Now obviously this shape is come from the actual scale scenes itself and I've all I've done is just measured in a centimetre from either end and then cut out the, the bit at the bottom. So that's all very straightforward and simple just made from sim two millimetre grey board as you can see there. But what I've done is turned it into a rolled steel joist. So you've got this I-beam type affair going on. If you can imagine, there would be another piece coming down here um, to make that I. Now, you might say to me, well, why, John, haven't you done that on this piece? And the reason for that 
is because if I put another piece sort of like that, so to speak, and set that up like that, there's going to be an internal wall which comes down in the gap. And I'm showing it to you from this angle so you can get the idea that it's going to go down in between the two sets of pillars. Obviously these being the pillars. So you're not going to see anything I put here because it will be glued straight to the outside edge of the wall. All right. So hope that's fairly clear, but the wall will come in from the outer edge and make it a, make it a lot thicker than it actually is. All right. Now to do this, what I've done is I've take I've cut some four millimeter strips. This is two millimeters, so that's going to give me an overhang of one millimeter. So all I need to do is mark off each of the points around the outside. So to mark off the first one, I am just going to leave it flat and then mark that with a pencil. Like that. And very gently score it. So that just bends nicely like that. Oops, sorry, there's... There's some building work going on opposite, so they are a bit noisy from time to time, if you heard that. I'll pull that back a bit. So all I've done now is lined that up in there, and I'm going to mark where the corner comes on that piece. So that's given me another mark. Again, another gentle score. Not very heavy, obviously, because it's scoring you're doing, not cutting through. And then just line that up again like that. Bring that one around. And mark on the final point on this bit, which is just there. And then score that one. Like that. And bend that over. So that's given me the actual shape I need now. So all I need to do now is put some glue around this part. Just the tiniest beads of glue. Don't need an awful lot, obviously. And I'm just gonna run my finger around the outside of that just to get rid of any excess. And then I'm gonna put it flat on the table and push the point into the middle and then each of the parts going into the outside edge. But you said, John, it's going to be one millimeter each side. So yeah, I'm just gonna gently push it across to get that one millimeter each side whilst the glue is wet, obviously. Like that, oops, that one's come off. And so on. Just push that down. Like that. It will take seconds to grab. And that one's absolutely fine for that internal bit. Now the second bit, again, I'm going to line up with this corner edge here. And put a mark. Just like that, score again. Fold it over. And then with the pencil mark off where this point here matches the card I've just cut. And then cut it off with a pair of scissors. Like that. And then the same again, just glue around the top. It's very, very easy, very. A bit more on that side. Trick is not to put too much on, but you want sufficient. So I want it enough so I can smear it on, but not so much it's oozing out. And then just press that on there like that. Make sure it's all nice and centered. Just 
push that back. Make sure it's lining up. Just make sure all the surfaces are and get that nice and level. All right. All right. Welcome back. Table's looking quite full at the moment with lots of bits in preparation for stuff. But uh, started working on these um, pillars or flat pillars. Um, so what I did was instead of trying to use the ones that come with the kit, um, the reason for that is because you only get a limited number and I would then have to sort of scan it across, put them in another program, multiply them, and it would just take a long time. So I just went back onto scale scenes and bought a sheet of the correct um, colour, which was this one. Okay, so... What I've done now is cut it into uh, 25 mil wide sections and then into 60 millimeter lengths, like so. And also the two millimeter gray board, as you can see, I've cut into 14 millimeter wide sections there. So all you do, I'm using a Pritt stick or one of those other brands, loads of other brands are available for this. And I'm putting on quite a generous amount. And so the reason for that is because I want it to go on easily and quickly. Okay. Now, once I've got that, I'm then going to hold it at the ends. Not even turn it the other way around. And gently press down all the way along. Gently, 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 gently. You can see now the corners have bent over and I'm moving my fingers around as I go along. All the way around like that. Turn it over a bit more. Because you need to get sharp edges. And if you saw Justin from Scale Model Scenery's um, blog the other night, he was talking about exactly the same and using as thin a paper as possible, which I fully agree with, obviously. Now, I, I'm just using normal photocopy paper, which has come straight out of the laser printer. Yeah, that's done. Now, it is a tad longer than that, and I've done that deliberately. So when I put them on and I glue them on, um, I can then... Uh, leave something to overlap. So I just now take my standard, um, in my case, uh, Cosmic Shimmer. A lot of people in the modeling world recommend um, Rocket Car Glue. I've never used it, but I, I can imagine it's a very similar stuff to this. I've only, because I was crafting for a number of years, I just got into using this stuff, so I just carried on using it. That's me. Um, Rocket Car Glow, I'm sure, is absolutely amazing. Like that. And then check it with the tri-square. So I'm just going to put that on the top there, make sure it's nice and square. And just push up against. And that is. All right. Yeah, give it a bit of a... Make sure it's centred there. And that's that bit. Okay, so that's all those done. Okay, now on to this part at the top here. Now, what scale scenes advise you to do is to use this part on the um, print-offs. And obviously you get three sections there, but you've got to remember that this is producing a shed, which is about that long. And then you, you make more of them and put them end to end. But I'm not building it like that. I'm building it as one or three big units, if you like. So the idea of this would be that you mount it on medium card and then cut through each of these sections to make these combs. And then you fold it over, double back on itself, and that gives you each of these parts here. And then the bridge bits would remain on the outside. And so once the glue's all gone off, then you cut through either with a pair of scissors or a sharp, very, very sharp knife, okay? But it means I'd have to 
either print off so many of these sheets just to get those three, or the other way of doing it would be to take that bit from the PDF into a desktop publishing program and then duplicate all of those. But I've decided to do it in a very different way, which I think would be easier for me. That's not to knock the scale scenes um, bit by any means. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant kit. And if I didn't think that, I wouldn't have bought it, would I? But I've got such a big thing to build. I just want to make things a little bit quicker for myself. So what I've done, this did take a little while, but I still think it would be quicker in the long run is to make very long rectangles two millimetres wide and then place them all two millimetres apart and then cut them into 11 millimetre strips, which is these, the width of that, okay? And then I've cut a load of two millimetre uh, strips of, of card, which is around about the 200, 250 gram mark. And then I'm going to cut them into 11 millimeter pieces and then stick them on here with PVA glue. Right, first part of them is to place that up against the end there. Now, ideally, I'd like to try and end in one of these gray sections on either end, but that's not necessarily gonna be possible. So I'm gonna mark off where that comes. Pencil. Just there, and that's where I'm cutting off to. So I'll trim that off. Just like that. And then with a little bit of glue, which I'm just going to put on there, like that. And then using the end of the scalpel, I'm putting it onto the dark sections. So I'm taking each bit, now one of those, which I'm just prodding and putting on and placing it on. Next bit, a bit more glue. Use that one down there, place it and put it on. Now I'm not gonna go through all of these and bore you to tears on watching me put all these on that would be incredibly dull but you might think well why am I using the Pritt stick for this and um, the reason being is because I don't think the Pritt stick would be quite strong enough particularly if you've got to if you end up with any of these which are ever so slightly longer and you try and push to cut through them that it could just dislodge them so I'm going to use PVA to stick them all on another way of doing it would be to paint the whole thing with PVA and then gently stick each one on which I might just do to be honest um, but, um, but yeah anyway you can get the idea of what I'm doing there I'm just covering over all the grey sections with each of these 11 millimeter pieces of card I'll come back to you once that's done right there it is they're all stuck on now so hopefully you can make that out okay next stage is to paint it grey now I'm using a very thin washi type mix of acrylic grey acrylic I mean, to be honest with you, I don't suppose it matters what grey you use, but, you know, it's whatever you want, really. I mean, you might even want to do yours a colour, in which case you paint it whatever colour it is you want. Obviously, I'm going to let that dry, and then once it's dry, I'm just going to stick it on, OK? I'm not going to show you sticking it on, but what I do want to point out to you is, can you, if you can see the way it's drying, if I zoom in, it's drying quite patchy. And quite frankly, that's exactly the type of thing I want. Because if I bring this one back to you, it's gone very sort of wild. And so when I rub some weathering over the top of that, it's gonna really start to look as if it's been there quite a while. So I'm really quite pleased with the way that's all coming out. Okay, zoom you back out again now. Oops, the wrong way. So I think the overall effect of this, I want it to look a used and old building. I don't want it to look spanking new. And um, so, like I said, when I get to the weathering stage, I'll show you what I'm going to do for that. But it will be a matter of salting and dirting up different areas at the same time. All right. Right. Nearly forgot this bit. I did promise I would be including this in the, the, at the beginning of the, of the episode. Now, I've just cut off 
a slightly larger piece for this section there and that's going to go on top of there so in exactly the same way as i showed you on the previous parts i'm going to take some strip and stick them just like that over each and every single one of these okay so i'll do that and i'll show you what to right, do there it is so all the ribs are now on and as you can see i've gone ahead and painted it gray now what i'm going to do now is just to place that well that's on the bottom by the way place that over the top get it lined up so i'm lining it up to the bottom edge of the the top of the door if you like making sure it's central just like that and then press and then gently with a pencil just very gently like that and I, you can see i've created those marks so now i'm going to cut with a pair of scissors I'm trying to do it in one pass there we go those two bits can go in the bin and then i'm going to stick that on there like that like so smear the glue around a bit more a bit more a bit more And then that can go on there, like that. And you can start to see how that's going to be formed there. And like I said before, quite liking the way that the paint is dried. Um, so together with a little bit of weathering on top of that, that will look a lot better. All right. Anyway, I am going to finish the video there, so I will catch you in the next episode, hopefully over the weekend. But again, no promises see how it goes all right take care of yourself bye then i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please do like subscribe and share not forgetting to click on that little bell to get regular notifications of any videos i upload some other videos are appearing on the screen right now which also might take your interest thanks once again and bye for now